cars, 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 6, and 78, signal 30, authority CB, time 9.03 p.m., dispatcher number 79, car 905, call the dispatcher, KEA 394, dispatcher KEA, 73rd precinct, address 171 Hertzell Street, cars 1634, 1635, and 89, signal 32, auto, out of town license plates, operator entered basement, that address, authority CB, time 9.05 p.m., station KEA 394, dispatcher number 79. Still up in the slide room? Yeah. Lieutenant Thomas will be in charge of this precinct. And no one else. So far as you are concerned, he has no superiors. If you'll give him your cooperation and your obedience. And I expect this precinct to maintain its present high record with the department under your new lieutenant. Do you wish to make any remarks, lieutenant? I'll talk to the men individually. Good idea. Dixon, I want to talk to you. I'll use your office, Thomas. Yes, sir. That's all, boys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck, lieutenant. Thank you very much. Sit down, Dixon. We've had 12 more legitimate citizen complaints against you this month. For assault and battery. From who? Hoods, dusters, mugs? A lot of nickel rats. You're a big disappointment to me, Dixon. You've just seen a man who started out at the same time you did. Take a big step up in the department. Which is something you'll never do unless you get hold of yourself. I know what to get hold of, sir. A little more pull. Sit still! You've got to learn, Dixon, what's expected of a police officer and what isn't. Yes, sir. I'll try to learn not to hate hoods so much. You don't hate hoodlums. You like to beat them up. You get fun out of it. You like to read about yourself in the newspapers as the tough cop who isn't afraid to wade in anywhere. Your job is to detect criminals, not to punish them. Is that all, sir? I'm reducing your rag, Dixon. You're going back to second grade. Any more complaints against you for cruelty or roughhouse, and you'll be back in uniform, pounding a beat. It's no fun telling you this. You're a good man with a good brain. But you're no good to the department unless you learn to control yourself. All right, you can go now. Thank you, sir, for the advice. Fine, thanks. You think you better be in bed, Willie? The parole rules allow me to 12 o'clock. I got 20 minutes yet. How's Mr. Scalise, Willie? What are you trying to do, trap me? I, I ain't consorting with no questionable characters, and nobody can prove that I am. That's a nice boy. You better get to bed. It's good fun. Sure. Hey, 
makes my point. Come on, eight the hard way, two fours. Seven the loser. You're very lucky tonight, Mr. Morrison. Well, it must be the little lady. Brought me luck. Your dice, Mr. Payne. Pat. Your dice, Mr. Morrison. Okay, I'll shoot 3,000. I'll take one. I'll take 500 of them. I'll take the rest. You're covered. Hello. Care to join our game, Mr. Bender? Sure, sure. How are things? Oh, fine. Six. Pumped in a couple Easy old friends of ours. Dixon and Klein. They bit. asked about you, but I think they're too busy to drop in. Too bad. All right, come on, Dice. Give it to me. A six right back. Here we go. Six. Ten. Ten. Mr. Morrison is from Texas and very rich. Here, you breathe on him. Oh, that'll do it. Now, you got Lady Luck riding with you, Dice. This is it. A six. Give it to me. There it is. A six. And getting richer. Six is my lucky number. I'll shoot the whole 6,000. You taking any, gentlemen? A grand. Same here. Four open. You're covered, Mr. Morrison. Well, I like your friends, Mr. Payne. Can't get better action than this in Amarillo. All right, Dice, now we're going for the big money. Cut! Well, what do you know? A seven. If you don't mind, I'd like to go home, Mr. Morrison. Morgan. Ken, you know I have to be at work at 8.30. Well, that's right. You can't keep a working girl up all hours. Then I'll take you home, Morgan. We'll all go together. I'll get your things. There you are. Mr. Morris? Yes, sir. You're 19 grand into it. <laughs> well, that's all right. You'll get it back some other night. I ain't leaving town for a week. Tell him you changed your mind. You want to stay? No, Ken. I told you I could only stay until midnight. But you can't do this to me. I'm not doing anything to you. I brought him here. Oh. So that's it. Yes, that's it. And you're fouling me up again. That's, that's all you ever do is foul me up. You're telling him to stay. No, I'm not. Why, you... Morgan. You heal. Sixteenth Precinct, address Forty Third Street Hotel, three seventy two C West Forty Third Street. Cars 618, 619, and 12. Proceed immediately. That's us. Signal 30. Authorities. Oh, Sergeant. Hi. Harley. Hi, Sarge. Hi. Dice joint, huh? Yeah. Floater. Is his name? Morrison. Big Barracuda. He was DOA. Knife cut his heart in half. Nobody did it. Nobody saw it. There's a cut on his hand. Yeah, he hit somebody hard. Who runs this parlor? Tommy Scalisi. He's in there. Oh, huh, that's nice. So Dream Boy finally stepped into something, huh? I've been waiting quite a while. You should have gone home to bed, Willie, like you were told. He'd be asleep now. With no parole troubles. I live in this hotel. I just dropped in for a cigarette. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Scalisi? Where did you hide the knife, dream boy? Go easy, Dixon. Keep your hands off me. Talk. Wise up, Mr. Dixon. You made a monkey of yourself two years ago trying to hang something on me. Who killed him? You or one of your playmates? You find a corpse and right away I'm a killer. You've been a killer for a long time. Have I? As I remember it, the jury found me innocent. And they weren't out more than 15 minutes. You're still a killer. What are you always trying to push me in the gutter for, Dixon? I got as much right on the sidewalk as you have. Don't talk to me about rights. You're a hood and a murderer. You're a pretty smart rat, Scalise, but this is your off night. What are you always jumping after me for, Dixon? Four years, jumping after me like I was somebody special. Why? That's right. Getting you is a special job of mine. I can't figure you out. 
Your father liked me and I... Shut up. Hello, Lieutenant. Got anything, Dixon? I've been waiting to tell you what happened, Lieutenant. Right, take them outside. We'll question them later. Congratulations on your promotion, Lieutenant. OK, OK, let's have it. Mr. Morrison was brought here by a fellow named Ken Payne, sort of an acquaintance of mine. There was a girl with him. I uh, didn't quite get her name. A Morgan something. Mr. Morrison wanted a little friendly play. How much did he win? He didn't win. He lost. You're lying, Scalise. Let's hear his story first, Dixon. He lost a grand or so, but he didn't care. He was making a play for this girl, showing his stuff. Payne was jealous. He hit the girl first, smacked her hard in the face, and she ran out. Then Morrison tackled Payne. Morrison pulled a gun, but Payne had him so he couldn't shoot, and they wrestled into the bedroom. Before I could call the cops, Payne came out. He didn't say anything, just left. Then Morrison came out and fell on the floor. He was dead when I got to him. What did you do with the knife? There wasn't any weapon. Payne must have taken it along. You're lying, Scalise. Let me handle him, Lieutenant. What is Payne's address? I don't know. K. Payne, 58 Pike Street, Chelsea, 32099. Another telephone number, Murray Hill, 59970. What's that? A pool room on 3rd Avenue. I'm sure you won't have any trouble picking him up. He was blind. All neat and ready with a fall guy, huh? Let me handle him. Go little. after Payne, Dixon. Come on, Paul. to change. Dad Morris. Kenneth Payne called. Don't answer. Maybe he's in the bar. Haven't paged. But I gotta talk to him. It's important. Trying to get Ted Morrison on the phone, huh? Who are you? Detective Dixon, 16th Squad. Get out. Maybe he's trying to win his money back. Don't give me that. He was cleaning up. How much? And he's got to cut me in. After what you did to him? He started it. It's all among friends. Hello. What? He isn't. Well, look, uh, Kenneth Payne wants him to call as soon as he comes in. Well, that's right. I said get out. I don't like cops. Ted Morrison is not going to call you back, Payne. Nobody asked you. Somebody sunk a knife into Morrison. He's dead. Dead? You're lying. Scalise is trying to frame you. Says you knifed him. Go home. Look, I'm trying to help you, Payne. Scalise and his boys are hanging a murder on you. They knocked him off to get their dough back after you left. Come on. You're all right. No cop's going to touch me. Stand up alone, then. I'll stand up when I want to. Get out of here. Get out!
Okay, buddy. Come on, let's go. Come on. This is a bad connection. Get this line clear. Mark, can you hear me? Yeah. I picked up some stuff on him I thought you ought to hear. Go easy on him. He's a war hero. Got a hat full of medals and a lot of newspaper friends. When he first got out of the service, he wrote a syndicated column for a few months. I thought I'd tell you so you don't mess him up if you run into him. Going to wait there for him? Yeah, I'll stick around in case he shows up. So long. Send a cab to 58 Pike Street, please. You call a cab? No, not me. Pennsylvania Station, please. Yes, sir.
Hello, Paul. I covered a few bars in the neighborhood. I just got here. See this? Slipped in and out after I was here. Probably watching you. Nice piece of luck for me. You can't be everywhere. Took all this stuff out of this closet kind of quick. Left his uniform and one shoe. There's another closet. Nothing in there. That's empty. Maybe somebody saw him get away. There's an old lady in the window downstairs. Police, we'd like to talk to you. What do you want? How long have you been sitting here? Since after dinner. I always sit here at night. Do you know Kenneth Payne? Oh, yes, I know him. Have you seen him tonight? Yes. He left in a taxi. When? I don't know. When you get old like me, you don't care what time it is. Approximately how long ago? About 20 minutes, I think. The taxi man woke me up. Everybody wakes me up tonight. Usually, I can sleep here. I always sleep here since my husband died. It seems less lonely. Music helps me. Thank you, madam. Come on, Paul. That's all. Thank you, madam. He's running for it, huh? We'll get him. You cover the yellow cab stand. See if you can pick up the driver. I'll cover all the independent garages. Okay. I know you're in there. Open up, you dirty rat. Open.
Where's the lieutenant? Silence. It's in there. Right. Lieutenant? Yeah. We got a break on this. One of the porters saw Payne stick it in a locker. Oh, good. Here's the cab driver's statement. Picked up a fare at 58 Pike Street around 110, is that right? That's right. You recognize this bag? Yeah, the guy was carrying it when he came out of the house. Uh, I noticed the name, uh, Kenneth something. Yeah, Kenneth Payne. Mm -hmm. He had a bandage under one eye, huh? Yeah, a piece of tape. Which eye? Under the left eye, uh, like this. Under the left eye. Thanks, you can go. We know where to get you. Looks like we have a definite line on Payne, Lieutenant. A ticket agent at Penn Station remembers selling him a ticket to Pittsburgh. Evidently trying to throw us off. He's probably holed up in town somewhere. No line on the girl yet, Lieutenant. Oh, keep calling, Benson. Scalise thinks she was either an actress or a model. Call the agencies on both as soon as they open in the morning. Okay. Call CB and have him teletype Payne's description to Pittsburgh. Dixon, take yourself a rest, you too, Klein. Then get busy on the hotels. Communication, please. I'm going home for a couple of hours. Knock off, Casey, and then report back at 8. Good night, boys. Tell the tech the following description to Pittsburgh. Age about 36. Give me communication. Complexion dark. Height 6 feet 1. Weight 180 pounds. Hair dark, build average. You look beat, Ma. Don't you feel good? Hey, Mark, you awake? Yeah. You got a line on the girl. Her name is Morgan Taylor. Lives up in Washington Heights. I got her phone number. What is it? Bosworth 35098. Bosworth 35098. Morgan Taylor live there? Yeah, she lives here. No, she ain't here now. She's gone to work. <laughs> Who's calling? Never mind. I'll call her later. She's gone to work. Have you got her employment address? Here it is. Friedman and Lyons, 525 8th Avenue. Very nice. But too high style for my customers. Maybe we could make a little bolero, Oleg. Well, I'll sketch it. Mm, I'm not sure. I'll let you know when I send the order in. Thank you, Morgan. It's all right with me. We have more orders than we can fill on this number. Did they notice it? I don't think so. Come here, let me see it in the light. Mm, still shells a little. I better put some more pancake on it. You know, Morgan, it's your own fault. Hold that. You keep thinking of him as a glamour boy. You won't see him for what he is, which is definitely a joke. So he won the war and freed the slaves. Does that entitle him to spend the rest of his life drinking barrels of whiskey and punching girls on the nose? 
Don't worry. I'm not going to see him anymore. You said that before. So he rolls his alcoholic eyes at you and you set yourself up for another left hook. You can't help him, Morgan. I guess you're right. There's someone to see you, Miss Taylor. I'll tell Ooh. him to drop dead. It's important. Mr. Friedman said to come to the office right away. Miss Taylor, this is Mr. Dixon and Mr. Klein. They are police detectives. How do you do? How do you do? Would you sit down, please, Miss Taylor? We'd like to ask you a few questions. What would you like to know? You were with Kenneth Payne last night? Yes. You were at a so-called floating crap game in the apartment of a man named Scalisi at the 43rd Street Hotel, is that right? Yes. Have you been in touch with Payne this morning? No. Have you any idea where he might be? No, I haven't. From what we hear, you're pretty well acquainted with Payne. Yes. How well? Could you tell us, please? I'm his wife. Is that so? But uh, you're living with your father, we understand. Ken and I separated three months ago. What happened at Scalise's while you were there? May I know why you're asking me all these questions? We'd rather tell you afterward, if you don't mind. Well, Kenneth was drinking, and we had a quarrel. I understand he hit you. Yes. Did you see him hit Morrison? No, I didn't. I left. Where'd you go? Home. Take a taxi? No, I met my father at his stand a block from the hotel. He's a taxi driver. He drove me to the subway. Did you hear from Payne after you got home? Yes, he telephoned. What'd he say? I don't know. I hung up. What time was that? About 12.30. Did he call from his house? No. How do you know if you hung up without talking to him? Because my father went down to Ken's place after he dropped me. What for? Really? Is this necessary? We think so, Miss Taylor. Well, I, I didn't want to tell him anything. But I was crying and he noticed the bruise. What did he say? He was very angry. He told me before that... What? Well, that if Ken ever hit me again, he'd beat his head off. Morrison was killed last night. No. Oh. At Scalise's place, shortly after you left. He was killed with a knife. And you're looking for Ken? Because you think he did it? When did your husband start getting jealous of Mr. Morrison? Jealous? That's silly. Mr. Morrison was somebody I hardly knew. But you went out with him. No, Ken called me up and asked me out to dinner. You just said you were separated from your husband. Yes, but he kept insisting. And I felt sorry for him. When I got to the restaurant, he had Mr. Morrison with him. Then after dinner, Ken took us to this gambling place. And then I realized all he wanted to see me for was to use me as a sort of decoy to help get Mr. Morrison to go there. I was sinking pretty low, I thought. Poor Ken. He must be desperate for money. Why did Payne hit you? Because I wanted to go home. He didn't want Mr. Morrison to leave. Because Morrison was winning? Yes. How much was he ahead? A great deal. I think they said about 19,000. Thank you for the information. We won't bother you any longer. Hello, Ken. Hello, Morgan. Night, night, Mary. Night. See you around. Night. Where's Taylor? Hello. Good evening. I'd like to talk to you. Have you found Ken? No. You think I know where he's hiding and won't tell? Where are you going now? Home. Would you mind if I came along? That's a nice way of putting it when you're out to give me the third degree. This is no third degree. This is strictly off the record. Have you come to nab me as a gambling house habitué? I'm not, really. I've never been in one of those places before. Are you... Are you having dinner with anyone? You inviting me? Yes. I take that subway there. It'll take me a few minutes to change. That's good enough. Hey, Dad. You home? I'm cooking. There's company. Same. 
No. This is my father, Mr. Dixon. Mark Dixon? I didn't know you. You don't remember me, huh? I'm Jiggs Taylor. I'm sorry I don't recall. Excuse me, I'll get ready. Well, sit down, I'll tell you about it. It's 2 a.m. I'm cruising through Central Park. There's a blizzard going on. A detective jumps in my cab and says, follow that black sedan, it's full of thieves. So I give her the gas. Here, here's a diploma the mayor gave me. It... For aiding Detective Mark Dixon in a time of danger. Oh, yes. Six years ago. Say, Dad, let's hear about how they opened fire and riddled your cab with bullets. Well, Mark can tell you himself. Can't you, Mark? Yes, there were a few shots fired, as I remember. A few shots? Dad always claimed it was a bigger battle than the Oregon. Well, that's the trouble with the new generation. No respect. How about a drink, Mark? No, thanks. On duty, huh? Suppose you're working on that Morrison killing. That's right. Cigarette? Thanks. Any other suspects besides Ken? That fellow Scalisi, huh? I've heard about him. The department thinks he's clean on that job. He's been released on bail. On a gambling charge only. But you got your own ideas, huh? In the first place, he lied about Morrison being loser when the game broke up. Your daughter says he was about 19,000 ahead. It looks like a cinch he's the guy. I wouldn't tell a lot of people about going up to Payne's place last night to beat him up. I don't care how many people hear it. He's had it coming to him for some time. Oh, Dad, please. Mr. Dixon isn't interested in my life story. I ask you, what did you do if you had a son-in-law like that? You know, it is a lucky thing I didn't find him in last night. I'd have... Oh, I forgot to ask you. I've been so excited over meeting you again. How about some chow? I got enough for three. No, Dad, we're going out. Well, we could talk over old times. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Taylor. It's nice meeting you again. Well, at least I'm glad she's going out with somebody who ain't gonna land her up to her neck in crooks. You're horrible, Dad. Good night. Good night, honey. Have fun, kids. Good evening, Mr. Detective. Where have you been hanging out? Hello, Martha. Good evening. How do you do? You know, I like places like this. They specialize in good food instead of head weights. It's the worst food in town. But don't worry, they usually serve a stomach pump with a dessert. Who invited you to come to my restaurant, Mr. Detective? Not me. Martha's the head of a ring of burglars. My presence makes her nervous. Yeah, last night we got a whole basket full of diamonds. You want to see? Bring us two of your dangerous dinners, Martha. You know how much I've been offered to poison this man? Ten dollars. That's right. I'm holding out for 15. Two dinners. You want wine? Bring a small bottle. <laughs> Same old cheapskate. She adores you, doesn't she? She ought to. I sent her husband up. Was he really a burglar? Wife beat her. Oh, she's wonderful. But she's under wraps tonight on account of you. I don't usually eat here with a dame. Oh, I mean... Dame's girl. all right. I imagine you bring your wife here. There's no such animal. Oh, my dad told me you were married. Your dad is not a reliable source of information. <laughs> You're quite right. I never knew anybody who tells so many lies. He does it for fun, though. He's always driving kings and queens or movie stars and overhearing the most amazing conversations. Like your dad, huh? Crazy about him. I hope you come here often, young lady. For five years, this man sits in my restaurant frightening everybody away. A detective in the window. You can imagine how people want to come in. But now, with a beautiful lady, he looks almost human. How's the soup? Horrible. It's very good. Thanks. Eat all you want. Have you been trying to get in touch with Payne? No. I don't quite know what to do. When were you married? After he came back from the war. But we knew each other before that. You said this morning you were separated. Three months ago. Why? It's hard to say why you leave a man, or why you stop loving him. I always blame Ken, but I guess it was my fault, too. Not understanding what made him seem so mean and impossible. 
I guess the chief thing wrong with Ken was no job. Lots of pride. Too much pride. A man can usually find work if he wants to. You're worried about me feeling badly because he's going to be arrested, aren't you? Something like that. I think I'll stick by him if he is. He'll need me. I owe it to him. Still love him, huh? In spite of everything. No. It isn't love anymore. Mr. Detective, telephone. Excuse me. That must be my partner. Probably wants to know what I'm eating. Dixon speaking. Been trying to get you for an hour, Mark. Big doings. We found pain. Where did you find him? River Watchman reported to the 6th Precinct down here that somebody slugged him last night. He just punched his clock at 3 a.m. Sent a couple of men over to talk to him, but they couldn't make head or tail of the slugging. Nothing stolen, nothing missing. Until the Watchman remembered, the man held something like a body. He started dragging the river and brought up pain a half hour ago. Who's that? Mark. Mark? Thomas. We found Payne in the river with a skull crack. We'll meet you at his apartment in 15 minutes. Be there. Okay, Lieutenant. What's the matter? You look sick. Give me the check. You gotta leave the beautiful girl just when she's beginning to like you. Mm, that's what you get for being a detective. No fun. Always chasing the wrong people. Something happened? I've got to go out on the job. Please, finish your dinner. It's really very nice. Best chicken and rice in town. I'm sorry you have to leave. Thanks. So long. Bye. Good night. You like him, huh? I think he's very nice. I'm glad. You know what that fellow needs? A family. He's got nobody. All he thinks of day and night is his job. He grabs himself a dizzy blonde once in a while, but that's no life. A fellow like him ought to be married to a beautiful girl. Have a home, kids, and... You're wasting your propaganda, Martha. I'm married. Wasn't a married woman. Wait till I see that dope again. You got it? It's blood, all right, quite fresh. I'd say not more than 24 hours. Get it to the lab right away. Okay. That clinches that Payne was killed in his room. Somebody came in there and slugged him. He bumped his head on the floor when he fell. He had a silver plate in his head as a result of a shrapnel wound in the war. The fall must have killed him. I buy that, Lieutenant. The killer tried to get the body out, but he was surprised by someone. Probably Dixon when he came through the front door. He ducked behind the staircase here and hid the body. That's the reason for the blood stain on the wall. If it is Payne's blood. Now, we'll get the lab report shortly. Now, we can establish the time of the killing is between 12.30, when Payne must have got here, and uh, 3 a.m., when the killer knocked out the watchman on the pier. Hello, Dixon. You know Mr. Gilruth from the DA's office. Sure, how are you? Hello. A lot of fancy footwork you did last night, Dixon. You and Mr. Payne. I couldn't be helped, Lieutenant. I can't understand how you didn't see him. You came in here at 12.50. Klein talked to you on the phone. That's right. Payne came in and packed and got out at 1.10. That's when the taxi picked him up. So you must have practically passed each other. Well, he wasn't here, so I thought he might be doing some drinking. I had a look in a couple of bars. That's a queer way to figure. A guy in the lamb is going to be sitting around bars. What time did Dixon come back here? About 1.50. And you left again right after that? That's right. We started chasing Payne. That's obvious. He lays a fake trail. He goes to the Pennsylvania station. And then he decides to come back and hide out in his own apartment. He figures the police have been there and they won't come looking again. Now, what time did Jix Taylor say he was here? About 2.15. That pretty well puts the finger on him, I'd say. Yeah, and he came down here crazy angry, according to his daughter, ready to knock Payne's block off. You're wasting your time on Taylor. I was at Dixon. It looks completely definite. Motive, opportunity. Scalise did it. I don't see that at all, Dixon. I'm telling you, Scalise knifed Morrison. And he was afraid Payne would go to the police with it. So he sent someone after him to finish him off. That doesn't stand up. Whoever killed Payne killed him by accident. He only meant to slug him. 
This Felici Hood would have taken no chances on a rumpus. He'd have knifed or shot him. Yes, Benson. We've got Jake's Taylor and his daughter outside. Bring them in, Harrington. Has he been talking? A mile a minute. You'd think he was going to a picnic. I think we can wrap the case up tonight. The statements from both of them. I'm Lieutenant Thomas. How do you do? How do you do, Lieutenant? I was expecting this, as I told the boys on the way down. The minute I heard Ken was murdered, I knew I was in for a going over, having been at the scene of the crime. You were already forced with your story, huh? Won't take long. Save you a lot of time, give it to you without you having to pump me. Everything that happened. Came down here last night around 2.15, looking for my son-in-law. You were pretty worked up, huh? I'll say. I told him last month if he ever laid a hand on Morgan again, I'd slap him silly. Go on. Go on, let's have it all, Jiggs. Well, that's all there was. The door was unlocked. I walk in, look around, nobody home, so I walk out. With his body. Whose body? Payne's. That sure smart figure, Lieutenant. I tell you, Never mind the lies, Jiggs. We've got every one of your moves. You took the body to the river, knocked out the watchman on the pier, and dropped Payne in the water. Oh, well, so I knocked out a watchman, too, huh? That's fine. Okay, now let me tell you something. I didn't see Payne. If I had seen him, I'd have taken a poke at him. I ain't denying that. He deserved it. But I left this place two minutes after I got here. And I picked up a fare. Three minutes later on the corner. Congressman Reynolds took him up to the Astor Hotel. Told me check down on that line. Yes, sir. Sure, check. Check all you want. And what time do you claim you got to the Astor Hotel, Jiggs? Around 2.40. Anybody see you around there? Yeah. Uh, uh, Pat Rafferty and Jaime Berg, the taxi drivers. Congressman doesn't answer in his room. You want me to run him down? No, no, we'll check later. The pier watchman was slugged at 3 a.m., according to the report. Is that right? Mm-hmm, yes. That gives Jiggs Taylor 20 minutes between 2.40 and 3 o'clock to come back here from the Astor Hotel and do his stuff. He couldn't have come back here from the Astor, killed Payne, lugged the body out to the car, driven down to the pier and slugged the night watchman by 3 o'clock. Couldn't have done all that in 20 minutes. It looks like we're on the wrong man, Lieutenant, especially if the congressman backs up his story. It's not the wrong man. If Payne was already dead at 2.15, and Taylor came and got the body at that time and stuck it in the back compartment of his car... Well, that's screwy. I told you I picked up Congressman Reynolds. Sure you did. But you were on the way to the river to dump Payne's body when Reynolds hailed you. He took him to the hotel. Twenty minutes was time enough to scoot back to the pier, slug the watchman at 3 a.m. and drop Payne's body. Payne was out of here at 1.10, according to the old lady downstairs. We're just wasting time, Lieutenant. I don't think so, Dixon. Bring them along. Did you see anybody coming out of that building carrying something over his shoulder? Like a large bundle? I didn't see anything like that. I'll take over, Casey. She says she didn't notice anyone Never carrying mind. a... Now, I'm going to ask you a very important question, Mrs. Tribon. Are you sure it was Kenneth Payne you saw leaving this house at 110? Of course I'm sure. I never heard so many foolish questions. I'm going to try a little experiment, Mrs. Tribon. Taylor, I want you to put on this raincoat and hat. What for? Put adhesive tape under his eye, somebody, to match Payne's description. Oh, no, wait a second. What's all this for? Now, don't act dumb, Taylor. It won't get you anywhere. Last night, you put on Payne's coat and hat and carried his bag out of here at 110. After you'd killed him and stuck his body away somewhere. You want to come clean now, Jiggs? Oh, I told you the truth. Then put the coat on. Don't do it, Dad. They have no right to ask you to do that. No, I won't. I ain't going in for any of these bunky shines. All right. Dixon, you're about his build. Put the hat and coat on. 
Oh, that's comic strip stuff, Lieutenant. The lady said she saw Payne leave here last night. Sure I did. I saw Mr. Payne out of the window. No, you saw a raincoat, a hat, and a bag. Go ahead, Dixon. Anybody got some adhesive tape? Here. Under the left eye. Mrs. Tribon, did he walk straight to the car or did he look down at you? He looked down. Dixon, take the bag. Just walk to the car and look down once. Now, is this where you were sitting? No, I was standing here closing the window. A taxi driver had asked me if I'd called a cab. Are you sure you could recognize a face at that distance, Mrs. Tribon? I can tell that fellow isn't Mr. Payne. Can you distinguish his face in this light? No, but I can tell by something else. It isn't Mr. Payne. By what? He didn't wave at me. Did Mr. Payne always wave at you? Always. He went like this. What about last night? Did he wave at you last night? Do you remember? Yes, I remember. He didn't wave last night. You're right, it wasn't Mr. Payne. No, never. He would have waved. Thank you, Mrs. Tribon. That's it, boys. Take him to the station and book him. Well, you're kidding. Nobody's kidding, Taylor. You thought you were pretty fancy walking off as Payne at 110. And you came and got the dead body at 2.15 and dropped Congressman Reynolds at the Astra at 2.40 and hurried it back to the pier. Well, that's screwy. I Take tell him along, I... boys. I'd like to talk to my father. Go ahead. May I talk to him alone? Can't be done. He's under arrest. Dad, please. Did you see Ken last night? So help me. I swear by your ma, I never saw him or laid a hand on him. I believe you. You take Miss Taylor home, Casey. We're knocking off for tonight. I'd rather go alone, if I may. You for now, Mark. It's got some water, Bill. You gotta hand it to Thomas. He wrapped this one up quick. It's the first job, too. I didn't think he had it in him. Stop talking like an idiot. He bungled it. Oh, wait a minute, Mark. That ain't fair. Don't tell me what's fair. I know. Scalise did it. Scalise did both jobs. Morrison and Payne. You can't go against the facts, Mark. I bet Jigs Taylor confessed the whole job in a day or two. See you later. Where are you going? I'm going to get it out of Scalise. Wait a minute, Mark. You're not on that end of it. You know the boss's orders. He's got a plan on Scalise. Let me go. Look, Mark, I'm going to give it to you straight like a friend. I don't like to see you made a monkey out by a girl with a pretty face. you got a record to protect. You're as dumb as Thomas. Come on, I'll drive you home. You're driving me nowhere, you dumb lug. You stick with your boss and his orders. You let me go or I'll paste you. We're closed for the night. Scalise in here? I go and see. Don't bother. Get your clothes on, Scalise. And I'm ready, Mr. Dixon. Hey, cut that out. Okay, Steve. I warn you not to touch me. Why, you don't seem to be carrying a knife at the moment. We found the one you used on Morrison. That's a lie. Is it? It's always a pleasure. 
So watch a cop four flush. I don't like rats to grin at me. That's too bad. Maybe I'd better show you my hand, dream boy. Tonight, I'm not kidding, Scalise. You're gonna talk. We found out Morrison had you for about 20 grand and wanted to leave. So you knifed him. Then you got worried about Kenneth Payne sobering up and telling about what happened. So you sent one of your mugs down to his place to knock him off. You trying to frame me for Payne? You killed Morrison, and you killed Payne. And I'm going to get a statement out of you. Outside you, Lugs, he's going to talk. And talk to me alone. Come on, I said outside. OK, Steve. Out front, Kramer. Yeah. Get your coats. I ought to finish the job. This guy's gonna keep after me. Wouldn't be smart. They put on too much heat for a dead cop. They're still out there? They're still there. Both of them? Both of them. I can't make up my mind. Don't. All right, have it your way. Let's go. Get the keys to you. Yes? Mark Dixon. If you don't mind, I'd like to talk to you, Miss Taylor. What's the matter? You're hurt. I could use a drink. Where the devil am I? Keep coming and going. I don't know why I came here. I'll go now. You can't leave like this. Why did I come here? I must have had something on my mind. What happened to you? A run-in with Scalisi and his pals. Shouldn't I call the police? Let's leave the police out of this. I made a big idiot out of myself tonight. Bigger than usual. Did I bungle this one? I'll fix your head. Come with me. I suggest you use an ax. with? Various objects. Why did you fight with Scalisi? Did it have anything to do with my dad? In a way, yes. 
You don't think Dad did it. You don't think he's guilty, do you? What I think doesn't matter, Roe or Nichols. Most important thing is that you need a lawyer. That's what I came here for. You need a big time lawyer. Here, hold this. One that can't lose. But if Dad's innocent, that I don't see why. That doesn't always me. help. Innocent people can get into terrible jams, too. One false move and you're in over your head. How much money have you got, you and your father, for a lawyer? None. No savings? No. Payne got him, huh? Yes. Thanks for the facial. I feel a lot better now. He's on back to bed. I'll be back in the morning about 8.30. You wait here for me. You're not fooling me. You do believe Dad didn't kill him. Your dad never touched him. Good night. Good night. his finger in your eye. I've got 700 in the bank. That leaves me 300 shy. It's for a lawyer. I thought you wouldn't mind kicking in. I want to get Norman Ackerman to handle the Taylor case. He never lost a murder verdict in his life, but you got to slap down one grand, minimum. Be right with you. Who is it, Paul? Mark. He wants 300 bucks. For what? For a lawyer, for his girl. Since when has that gorilla head got a... Shh! Please, Shirley, don't argue. After the way he treated you, to have the nerve to come here and ask I for money... I told you. No arguments, please. You told me you were never gonna talk to him again. I don't know, Shirley. Sometimes you really get me so with this kind of nagging. Three hundred dollars for a man you were gonna punch in the jaw the next time you saw him. I... Take them to the Acme loan this time. You'll get more. Who knows? I might even get to wear them someday. Yes? Detective Dixon is here with a young lady. Have them come in. Send off that cable, Mary. I'll call you later. Hello, Mark. Hello, Jerry. Well, what happened to you? I'm just fine. Oh, Mr. Morris, this is Miss Taylor. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Taylor? Sit down. Thank you. Jerry, I understand Ackerman's out of town. When do you expect him back? He's in Washington. He's due back around 5 this afternoon. I'd like to make an appointment with him for Miss Taylor. Her father's involved in the Payne Morrison case. Yeah, I read about it. Thought you were on it, Mark. I am. That's why I'm here. I like stiff competition. Here's your retainer for Miss Taylor's father. It's $1,000. I'll hold it. Come in around 5.30. Mr. Ackerman will see you, Miss Taylor. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
I never heard of anything so generous. What you just did. Well, my partner kicked in, too. You're an amazing man. You know something? I could kiss you. Right here. Take a rain check on that. I'll give you an alibi for your boss. Tell him you're late because of police questioning. Mr. Friedman has dispensed with my services. I'm the notorious Miss Morgan Taylor. Bad for buyers. Might take their minds off Mr. Friedman's creations. That mug, I'll run him in. I bet you would. All right. Goodbye. There's a phone call for you, Mr. Detective. Do you want to answer it? No, I'm busy. That's what I thought. I told him you weren't here. It's wonderful the way he looks at you. He didn't even eat his ravioli. He just eats you up with his eyes because you're so beautiful. Set it out. What's the matter? I'm trying to help you. You don't know how to make love, so I'm making love for you. Bye-bye, Martha. Bye. Bye. It's a wonderful day. No job. Everybody against me. My poor dad sitting in a cell. And it's a wonderful day. Isn't that amazing? Hey, Mark. Excuse me, Mark. Hello, Mark. In the fourth width out for you. Where you been hiding? A manhole? What's up? Skipper's chewing on the telephone. Come on. Mind going up to see Ackerman alone? Might be better at that. And wait for me at my hotel, 230A East 54th. I'll be there, Mark. And thanks for everything. Let's go. You wanted to see me, Inspector? Come here, you. Is this one of the men who beat you up last night? That was just a personal affair, sir. Your personal affairs seem to be getting in the way of the department, Dixon. Take this man out and hold him as a material witness. You had no business going after Scalisi. You were asked not to. You were told to lay off by your superior. I thought I could get a statement out of him. Well, you didn't. And now you've driven Scalisi to cover with your bullheaded tactics. It'll take us days to find him now. I'll find him. You'll find nobody. I'm not throwing you out of the department, like I should. But I'm inviting you to take one week of your annual vacation, beginning as of now. I don't want to see or hear of you for a week. I want you to go someplace and get hold of yourself. Yes, sir. Look at you. All bunged up like a barrel house vag. First thing you better do is get your head fixed up, inside and out. That's all. Yes, sir. He's got a point. You shouldn't have let Scalisi go until the Morrison job was cleaned up. It looked certain that Payne had done it, sir. Get on this fellow, Steve. I've got a hunch you'll sing if you keep on him. And try talking to him like Dixon would. Yes, sir. Sit down. You are going to talk. You were in that crap game with Morrison. Yeah, but I didn't see Listen. nothing. I want straight answers. And I want them now. Hello. Did you see Ackerman? Yes. You've been crying. What happened? Mr. Ackerman doesn't want to take the case. He's too busy. There are other lawyers. I'll get in touch with Bill Cantwell. He's as good as Ackerman. It won't help. It's no different than it was. It felt all right this afternoon. I didn't realize how serious it was. But now I know. I thought because Dad was innocent, nothing could happen to him. But it will. 
It won't. It's already happened. He's in jail. So try it. And he didn't do anything. Somebody else did it, and he's got to pay for it. He won't be tried. Don't try and fool me. Ackerman didn't take the case because he was afraid of losing it. That means they might find him guilty. I'm not fooling you. Nothing is going to happen to your father. Why? You didn't sound so certain before. Now you're certain. Because he didn't kill Payne. Well, can you prove it? Yes. How? Mark, you know something you haven't told me. That's right. What? What is it? I'll tell you. Please. Oh, that's not fair. To stand there without telling me. Even if you have to break some police rule. If you know something, Mark. I can't stand thinking how he feels. He's never done anything wrong. You don't know him. He's sweet. He's always felt that everybody was his friend. Now he's in jail, like a criminal. You don't know what it is to have your father in trouble. My father was a thief. He's dead now. He died when I was 17, trying to shoot his way out of jail. I worked all my life to try to be different from him. Look. Darling. You're a sucker for wrong guys like Ken and me. You're not wrong. I trust you with my whole heart. I'm glad you told me about your father. You're not like him. I know it. Thanks. I figured out what to do about your dad. What? Don't ask any questions. I've got to do things a certain way. You look tired. Get some sleep. Thanks. I'm not afraid anymore. Everything's going to be all right, isn't it? Sure. It'll turn out all right. Hold on. I'll wait here for you. to be more delicate, Mr. Dixon. I uh, almost hit my head on the door. That's okay, Willie. The cab's insured. I wasn't doing nothing, Mr. Dixon. I was just standing there reading my paper, that's all. I'm not interested in what you were doing. You're up for parole violation Monday. I know. Three more years, isn't it? That's right. Would you like to duck that? You can't do nothing, Mr. Dixon. I can say I sent you up to Scalise's hotel, using you for a stoolie. Yeah? Particularly if you prove it. Like how? Don't play dumb. Y you mean by squealing about the Morris job? No, by telling me where Scalise is. You're going to tell me, Willie. You'll save yourself three years and a lot of trouble, bad trouble. Come on. What do you call this, good trouble? You're asking for it, and you're going to get it. Wait, wait, wait. They'll kill me, Mr. Dixon. Where's Scalise? I got to find out first. A, a telephone. Let me, let me get to a telephone. OK. Hey, Mac. Pull up at that bar. OK. Need some change, man. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Don't push me, they'll catch on. Get in that booth. I won't listen.
Hello, this is Willie Bender. Who's this, Kramer? Listen, Kramer, I'm hanging here by your shoelace. What do you mean, what do I mean? Mark Dixon's on my neck. He's right outside the booth. No, no, he can't hear nothing. He wants to see Scalise. What's the idea of calling here? Ain't you got any brains in your head, stupid? That copper will grab this number. Who is it? Willie Bender. Dixon has glommed onto him. This is Scalise. Is Dixon alone? It's okay, Willie. I'll get this straight. I'd like to see Mr. Dixon, but all by himself. Now, here's the way I want you to work it. Get out a pencil and write this down. So if he's watching you, he'll know it's on the square. Hold it just a second. Go ahead. Tell him I'll meet him under the following conditions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK, I got it. Yeah. What did Scalise say? Well, I wasn't conversing with Scalise. I was talking to Kramer. And he says he'll contact Scalise in an hour and that you should be in the East River Drive across the street from Bellevue at 3 a.m. And if everything's OK, he'll pick you up there. Uh, and he says you've got to come alone. What else? That's all. Thanks. Uh, what about my parole? I've done everything I could. to our service, send a messenger to the Greystone Hotel. You know where it is. Have him wait in the lobby. The name is Dixon, Mark Dixon, right away. to tell you this while I was alive. Because I didn't want to end up like Sandy Dixon's kid. That's what every hood in New York calls me, Sandy Dixon's kid. And even in that apartment behind my back. I wanted to end up as a cop. And that's what I'm going to do. I killed Kenneth Payne. It was an accident. I went in to pinch him. He slugged me, I hit back. How was I to know he had a silver plate in his head? But I covered it up like a mobster. Because I couldn't shake loose from what I was. Now I'm shaking loose. I'm going to get Scalise for you. He's a hood, like my old man was. to worry about pinning the Morrison killing on him. You can pull him in for mine. And that will square things all around. 
That's really my fix. Where's Scalisi? Scalisi ain't here. He left a message for you. What is the message? He's willing to see you under certain conditions. What conditions? He got to park your gun. Where is he? We got instructions. It's no go with the rod. Put it down here. Anything else? We gotta frisk you. Go ahead, we're wasting time. He's clean. Come on. It's okay. Sit down, Mr. Dixon. I told the boys you'd come alone. That's because I understand you, Mr. Dixon. What I don't understand is your reason for calling on me at this time. I said, sit down. I never saw a man as full of hate as you. I consider it almost humorous the way you came hot-footing it after me alone. I'm in the clear on the Morrison job. The police are satisfied to let me alone. But you're still hot on my neck, as always. 
Sit down, Dixon. I'm not kidding. It don't add up, Dixon, you staying on my neck like this. Maybe you thought you could start me running by coming after me. <laughs> well, we're not running, Dixon. We're all fixed to leave tomorrow morning. Passports in order and everything. And I'm leaving you locked in here. It'll give us something to laugh about. You sitting here for a couple of days trying desperately to attract attention. It'll maybe give the department a laugh, too. Well, go ahead, Mr. Dixon. You came out here for something. Let's hear what it is. You've got something on your mind, the way you look, Mr. Dixon. I'm going to give you some advice, and you'd better listen carefully. You start mussing me up, and you're going to get it. Do you hear? You'll only throw one punch, and they'll let you have it. I've given them instructions. Hold it. No more shooting. Why, well, he asked for it. Sure. Sure he asked for it. That's what he came here for, so we should rub him out. He's crazy. I saw when I looked in his eyes. Kramer, get your stuff, fix him up. That's a fancy way of trying to frame somebody, getting yourself knocked off. A guy's got to be out of his head for that. I didn't know a guy could hate that much. Not even you. And all because your old man set me up in business. I got it added up now, Dixon. I should have figured it last night when you tried to hang the pain job on me. You were the first cop to get to Payne's house. You found Payne and slugged him and killed him. And you took the body to the river. And you had to slug a night watchman. And you've been walking around ever since, half cop and half killer. The man who hates crooks. The law that works by itself. The cop who can't stand to see a killer loose. So what is he? A hood and a mobster like his old man. interesting how blood will tell. Your old man would have been very proud of you to see how you finally followed in his footsteps. You and me ought to get very friendly when you're on your feet again, Dixon. There are a lot of things a smart cop could do for me. They got Steve. They beat it out. You let go of the whole works about Morris. Come on. I haven't finished a bandage. Let her bleed. Come on. change, can you? Always have to break orders. Always have to do things your way. <laughs> this time I've got to hand it to you. You hit the nail right on the head. Thanks, Inspector. Mark. They're letting Dad out. I don't know what to say. But thanks. He didn't do it single-handed, Miss Taylor. The department contributed a small share toward establishing your father's innocence. Not that I'm not proud of you, Mark. I'm putting you back where you were and recommending you for promotion. Oh, that's wonderful. There's your letter back. Since there was no report of your death, I didn't open it. You expected to die. I don't think Mr. Dixon knows what he expected. He was pretty sore at me when he wrote this. I think he's in a different mood now. Tear it up, Mark, and no hard feelings. And take a rest till your arm heals. Dad's waiting, Mark. Will you come home with us? Sounds like a nice holiday for a change, Mark. 
Go on, you've earned it. I'd like you to open the letter, Inspector. You sure? Yes, sir. Open it. What is it? Mark. That clears up both cases. You're under arrest, Mark. No. What is it? Please tell me, Mark. Would you mind letting her read the letter, sir? Report to Lieutenant Thomas. I'll make the charge myself. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Morgan. No, Mark. They'll believe you. They must believe you. It was an accident. A mistake. Anybody can make a mistake. You mean you'd give Sandy Dixon's kid another chance? Every chance in the world. That's enough to live for. So long, Morgan. 